This is Mario with MIA Microflight and in this video you are viewing some of the various antennas that I've been making for FPB uh, flying under the 5.8 gigahertz uh, bandwidth. Your typical uh, commercial antenna is here. This is a clover leaf. I don't know if this is a right hand or left hand polarized but it's a circular uh, polarized antenna uh, typical for FPB flying. Here's your typical monopole that is used on these little tiny quadcopters. You see just uh, the antenna sticking out, uh, which is a quarter wavelength of the frequency. The penny antenna, which is a MIA microflight antenna. This is my antenna that I designed, and you can read about this in a video that I did earlier that talks about this particular antenna and how I got to this uh, idea here of using the pennies. This is a uh, patch antenna that was built by uh, following the calculations uh, or the reference that is given by IB Crazy in one of the FPV forum threads. I believe this one came from RC Groups actually. It's e either an RC Groups or FPV Lab forums where you can find IB Crazy's uh, do it yourself um, instructions on how to do these antennas. Of course, the one he did was for 1280 megahertz, which is 1.8 gigahertz, and I uh, calculated mine for 5.8 and thus that's the particular size but he uh, gave that information uh, out in some of the forums and he also sells uh, I believe these antennas commercially but this antenna works I mean these all these antennas work and some work a little bit better and I just don't know I'm trying I'm trying to figure out you know the uh, why some of these antennas work a little bit better than others I don't have unfortunately lab equipment that I can test these antennas and get a, a true reading of the VSWR front to back ratio all that uh, you know um, radiation patterns all that good stuff that you need you know to uh, determine whether an antenna is uh, performing uh, realistically to the to what you think it's performing so my uh, approach here has been to test these antennas on my models and to see which one yields uh, less noise uh, and gives me a little more range so this is where this is coming from I've been trying to stay very true to these antennas per IB Crazy's uh, calculations, and um, and that's how I built them because I needed to have a good reference for these antennas so that I can go on to making these penny antennas. So let me talk about these. Uh, here's the four penny antenna. This is basically uh, a uh, take of this antenna. Here is a patch antenna. It's a directional antenna because it. Uh, has uh, a narrow beam width according to IB Crazy's uh, uh, calculations and uh, the information that he has shared over his uh, threads. This is the patch antenna. So this is a directional antenna, but you also get side uh, uh, lobes, I think, or, or side um, radiation. So you can use this uh, on the side, not as much as, as it's more directional. This one right here was uh, a penny take on the um, on, on, on this spiral antenna, or that this is also a directional antenna, high gain antenna. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven coils. It's a coil helix antenna. So it's more for directional purposes. It has a longer beam width, you know, narrow beam width on the sides. But you can still fly with this antenna on the sides and, and in back of you as long as you don't go too far. I mean, that, that's basically how these antennas work, the, the directional antennas. Uh, and so this was my take sort of on this idea here on this concept of making a helix uh, antenna but it's, you can see that it's not really helix it's more like a Yagi antenna the separations between these pennies is uh, is what's important this these pennies were separated at quarter wavelength so basically it's the same distance between the pennies that you find on these uh, monopole antennas that are used on these uh, 5.8 gigahertz uh, uh, the VTX or transmitters so that's the same because we're receiving the signal, the VTX, this is the, the video signal from here via these antennas here. So all these are based on the 5.8 gigahertz bandwidth. Now I, I get calculated mine at 5865, which is channel one. This is what this Mobula 7, little tiny quad, calibrates itself automatically when you boot it up. When you first plug in your battery, it comes up on channel on band one. Uh, band A rather channel 1 which is 5865 and so these antennas that I've been making are tuned to those frequencies mechanically tuned like I said I don't have the equipment to 
uh, uh, tune these with the equipment. That would be the ultimate thing to do. But the way I tune these antennas is I, I put them on my models. I run these models as far as I can go, and I keep tweaking the the, the antenna. How do you tweak these antennas? Well, in Ivy Crazy's patch antenna, he used spacers, nylon hardware, and also spacers to separate the uh, the distance between these plates. This is the active plate, this is the, the ground plate, or the reflector plate, or plane. And so you can tune these antennas by changing the, the distance between these two without getting too much into antenna theory. I'm just going to say that that's one way to tune them. Uh, but it depends on how well you um, calculated, you know, all these dimensions and distances to begin with. So on this one here, my uh, my idea was to allow the plates to be compressed or expanded, and so I used O-rings. And so that's one of the differences between my, my antenna that I did and his antennas. His antennas are also tunable. Be, uh, but you have to, because they're, they they use rigid spacers, nylon spacers, you would have to remove the spacers, trim the spacers a little bit and kind of tune it. So it's a little more cumbersome that way than simply using O-rings as I'm doing here. So that was my take on, on this antenna, my improvement, if you want to call that an improvement over that idea or, or that approach. Um, same uh, idea with these uh, antennas here, this other one, it uses, uh, basically what I did is I took the, uh, the the same idea with the uh, with the O-rings uh, to to separate the plates, and I use O-rings here to separate those plates. On this one, I use a two double O-rings, so the separation is a little bit uh, bigger, and on this one, it's a little more shallower or more close to to the to the plates. But you know, that's just one one way to do these things. Uh, likewise, here I use one O-ring. These are double. 4004 O-rings, Buma O-rings that I use here to do the separations here. I'm not quite, quite sure on the, the distance here, like I said, without equipment it's very hard to um, uh, very hard to arrive at, uh, at, at a very precise uh, setting, but at least it gives me uh, a way to adjust these antennas somewhat. Uh, there, there's no way that, that I can adjust these separations here because those are tuned specifically to quarter, quarter wavelength. And the way I attach these solder these to this, uh, this is a brass um, hex uh, tube, I think that's like a one eighth uh, hex uh, tube. Uh, I drilled the holes on the pennies and then I separated these with wood blocks so that I can solder each one individually and so that it would retain its shape and be um, and be perpendicular to the, each penny to be perpendicular to the, the shaft that runs right through it or the stem. Uh, basically this antenna is connected to the connector in similar fashion as these other antennas are connected. You connect the center lead of the coaxial cable to your active elements. In this case it would be the stem with all these pennies here above the first one here, one, two, three, four, five. Um, it's all connected to the center lead of the coaxial cable and then the ground lead or the sheathing of the coaxial cable is connected to the reflector plate. So that's um, all using RG 316 uh, coaxial cable. I think that's uh, uh, the impedance on, on those cables are 50 ohms, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So it's kind of in, in line with a lot of these things that are done around the 50 ohm uh, impedance uh, uh, for, for matching purposes. You, the, the best antenna you can have is, is an antenna that reflects most of the energy forward and does not reflect anything back towards the um, towards the uh, source, which would be the, the signal generator, which in this case would be the, the transmitter. So, and, and that has to do with impedance matching. When you take an electronics course, you learn all those things. Uh, and so, if you want to learn more about that, you know, look into information that deals with um, electronics and, and uh, radio frequency and how radio waves uh, propagate through the air. But this is uh, my take, once again, on these penny antennas. Okay, so this brings uh, us to this uh, point here. Uh, this is another antenna. This is called the uh, Crosshair Antenna. Once again, this was modeled after Ivy Crazy's uh, calculations that he posted for his uh, 1280 uh, uh, megahertz antenna under FPV Lab forums. There's one thread that talks about this and it gives you all those figures on how to arrive at your particular frequency. So this is calibrated to 5865, which is band A channel 1 on my Mobula 7 VTX. 
So this is the antenna that was built. Uh, it was built very true to uh, uh, trying to stay uh, very um, uh, close to the numbers as uh, it came out per this uh, frequency here and trying to be very very careful on soldering the parts here. The most critical part here is the soldering of these two little wires these little crosshairs here. They're um, simply wires one uh, bent at 90 degrees one has a short lead the other one has a longer lead. In this case mine came out to 50, uh, 0.5 and 0.4 uh, inches so this is yet another antenna that I did, uh, just to have a reference, because my mind has been set on making antennas with pennies. And what you're seeing here is the penny version of this antenna, if you will. Now, I did change some things here, such as the uh, balum, which is the, the tube that sits uh, inside the uh, plate here, and that's there for and once again tuning purposes impedance matching uh, look into electronics once again books or information to find out how balums work uh, mine is on this one I made uh, mine at 5 16 versus 3 16 that I use for this one here and I use 5 16 outside diameter brass tube by half inch remember these wires were coming out at half inch for me on the longer side and quarter and 0.4 inches on the shorter side that figure, I'll talk a little bit more about that that number in in uh, in another part of the video. But anyway, so because of the four pennies here uh, that act as reflectors have a spacing here, five sixteenths was the diameter to allow that to be uh, sort of um, sit nice and snug in there, and so that's why I use that dimension there. And so you can see the balum from the side here now. Inside the balum, you have the coaxial cable, which is run through, and it's grounded at the base via the back plate. Very similar to the way this antenna is done. You know, you ground your coaxial cable at the back plate. Of course, that's copper plate, and these are copper, two copper pennies. These pennies are pennies that I've had from uh, many, many years. Uh, these go back to, uh, I don't know, 1940, I think it's one of the pennies that I was able to locate, but these are beyond... 1982 year so they're two copper so and then I also have the spacing here now on this one here the spacing I made it a little more rigid uh, and it does have a uh, some uh, o-rings just for compression and expansion you know for, for further tuning if you, if you want to tune this even further but I didn't have to tune it Now in the next portion of this video you will see a good portion which is done um, during daylight and in the afternoon I did in my backyard and in front of the cul-de-sac that I did with this antenna with the crosshair antenna and you can see where the, where the noise is generated and how this antenna is performing as I'm flying through the, through the area here. At night I did some videos with this antenna okay and you can see how that is performing. Now I should say that when I did this video here at night with this with this antenna here, the penny antenna, I was using this DVR here. This is a different DVR than the one that's on my visor here, my FPV guy, visor. That's a different DVR than that, different manufacturer. I don't know if my wiring here has some kind of an issue, but I noticed that when I did the video at night with this setup here, I was getting some blackouts in the uh, uh, recorded as part of the uh, uh, the video that was recording yet in my screen I had good control visual all the time there were there were some fuzziness in some areas but not as the video will show so keep that in mind